Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and on this channel we talk about all the houseplant things and all of the puppy things. <laughs> Leo was laying in my lap content until I started talking and then he's like, okay, what are we doing? Um, okay, so today I'm going to be showing you my begonia collection. I've been collecting begonias almost since the beginning of my collection, but I had only one for a very, very long time. And then when I moved to Columbia, I think that they became a little bit more readily available. My local nursery has a ton of begonias and I already am thinking of one other one that I'd really like to have. But uh, let's go back to the very start and talk about my first begonia ever. So this is a begonia lucerna and she has looked many different ways throughout her life. By the way, I'm gonna take this out. This is a little marker that I have in my plants for when I had a plant sitter that let her know when to water plants. So I have them like on a schedule based on the color of tag, um, but that's not necessary anymore. And I keep finding them in my plants and removing them when I remember. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this is a begonia lucerna and this is the first begonia I ever got. And I actually got this from someone local in Tucson. The plant came from a cutting of a huge begonia I don't have a photo of it, but it was huge, like probably six or seven feet tall and maybe like three feet wide. So it was like an entire wall of begonia, of this specific begonia. It was really cool. And she got a cutting from one of her friends and then she shared it with me. So this started out, I have seven pieces of this plant. So there's seven stems total. So she gave me quite a bit actually, but, and I don't remember if I, chopped and propped at all. It doesn't look like I did. That's why I was kind of looking at it to see um, what was going on with the chop and prop situation, but I don't think I chopped and propped it. This plant, when I first got it, I put it outside and it wasn't super happy. I think it was too hot for it. Even though its mother plant did live outside, I thought that it would be okay, but it might've been just getting too much sun exposure. So when I brought it inside, it pretty much exploded and looked really, really beautiful. And then I moved and it was kind of hard on it in the move. So it would probably be a lot bigger if I hadn't have moved. <laughs> These leaves are absolutely beautiful and it kind of made me fall in love with cane begonias because this is a pretty classic cane begonia, like a classic angel wing begonia. It's currently sitting in De La Tanks in a plastic pot inside of a basket. It's honestly just such a striking plant, like it catches your eye um, and I just, I love it. I feel like all begonias are pretty striking, honestly. Okay, the next begonia in my collection is the Begonia Benigo Pink. I think that is what it's called. I'm trying to make sure that I get the name right. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only way that you can pronounce that word. Super beautiful. This is one that I got from Lowe's uh, right when I moved here, actually. I went out to Lowe's and I was like, oh my gosh, the Lowe's here actually has like good plants. So I got this one and it hasn't grown that much. I mean, I've taken some cuttings off of it, so that's probably why it looks a bit smaller than it should. But anyway, it's on this trellis that I made a while ago. I actually made a video tutorial on this trellis and super super easy trellis to make i actually would like to put all of my begonia on trellises just because i think that they look really beautiful interacting with this like bamboo look i just think that there's certain plants that look really good on trellises and this is just one of them they don't necessarily climb like they don't have aerial roots or anything that would allow them to climb on their own at least that i'm aware i don't really see anything like that they would definitely need to be like tied to the trellis so i have some like plant velcro that's what that green stuff is but anyway this is a super like delicate leaved begonia these leaves are very thin but it does lose a lot of leaves down here i've noticed that it's like kind of losing a lot if i don't water it very often so i'm definitely retraining my brain to water my plants more often because i feel like a lot of them are showing side effects of the couple of months when i was not really into house plants um so we've got some leaf loss on the bottom there but in general this is one of those plants that follows the light as well all you have to do is just put it in front of a window and all of the leaves will eventually face forward and it's very very beautiful this one has been moved around quite a bit so the leaves are all facing <laughs> different directions. I also love that it has like this pinky undertone because I love pink plants. Well, let's say I love subtly pink plants. Like I have the Tridescantia Nanook, which also has like a pink color to it. Um, and I just really enjoy that. I think that it's beautiful. I don't know how I feel about the pink princess. I think I haven't 
fully recovered from my pink princess debacle, but I think that the subtleness in the pink is really, really beautiful. Okay, so next up is my Begonia Maculata. This is probably the most popular Begonia on the market right now, or it was at least a few months ago or a few years ago. I don't know actually which is the most popular Begonia on the market. That's kind of a big statement. <laughs> Anyway, this one is very, very popular and you surely have seen this one before because it is absolutely beautiful and I am just so excited for this to continue growing because as they get taller and taller, these long skinny leaves just get bigger and bigger and I just think it looks so cool. It's just like a visually cool plant to look at. Like honestly, begonias are so underrated, you guys. <laughs> But I always say that the plant community is broken up into like a few plant families that people are like obsessed with. Begonia is usually one of them and Hoya is usually one of them. Like you either love begonias or you love Hoyas. I mean, of course people really like philodendron, but I feel like everybody likes philodendron in general, but there's always that like subset of plants that people are like super obsessed with. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, this begonia has really beautiful long leaves. It also has like a cute little polka dot detail. What I love so much about begonias really is the polka dots. I find that to be such an interesting marking. It's so unique. Like polka dots really don't show themselves that often in plants. And so I just think it's really cool that this one has that. And then also a lot of begonias, if you look at them from behind, they have like really beautiful red colored leaves. And I honestly love when leaves look that beautiful from behind. Um, and also, I'm thinking right now, this plant would probably be pretty easy to make a fake version of. It's just like silver dots. I feel like it'd be pretty easy to make. I think that Cory Beth makes, the person who I followed a tutorial for, for a fake plant, actually has a begonia tutorial. I'll have to look in the book and see. But anyway, I've had this one for over a year and I actually had it hanging on my wall and it's okay as a plant like hung up on the wall, but I'm definitely in the future going to have it on a trellis and have it just sitting on this bench right here. Okay, this is a begonia that I looked at in the local plant nursery where I bought it for probably two months maybe longer and i was like next time i'll get it and then every single time i went i was like next time i'll get it so i kept pushing it off because i wasn't wanting to buy more plants unless i really 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 wanted it and then one day i was in there and i said to myself listen becca you've been saying that you're gonna get this plant for months let's just finally get it. And I'm so glad that I did. So I actually bought two plants. I bought one that was a little bit shorter. So that's what like all of this is. And then I bought one that was much taller and that's what all of this is. So let me show you a close up. This is the Begonia Angel Wing Miss Mummy. Actually, by the way, all of these have been Angel Wings so far that I'm aware of. And yeah, this one's called the Miss Mummy. It has like a really beautiful again pinkish purplish hue to it this one i would venture to say is a bit more purpley it just is so so beautiful and striking and really really tall and it's actually standing up completely on its own so that's something pretty cool about begonia is these stems are really really strong and don't really need that much support until later i mean i am going to give this one a support but honestly it's standing straight up completely on its own. I mean, it is arching a little bit at the top, but that's just because this, the stem is a little skinnier on top, but it's just really cool that it can completely support its weight like that. And I wonder how these grow in nature. And also something that's really cool, they're such cool growers because look, there's a leaf growing out right here, as you can see, and then we have another leaf growing out of that node. So I find begonia, especially cane begonia, really, really easy to propagate because there are so many nodes on these stems and all you have to do is just stick it in water and it will root as long as you cut it like below a node and put it in water. Um, that's obviously how I propagated this one. I was just given some cuttings and it was in water for a while and then it grew roots and then I put it in soil. And it's also really cool because sometimes a leaf will fall out of the node and like die but then a new leaf will grow there sometimes. I've noticed that that happens to me as well. And I do actually have one more begonia in my collection, technically, but it hasn't arrived yet. So there's this begonia that I've been trying to buy from Tennessee Tropicals for 
probably like the last three restocks, but it's been sold out every single time. Okay, so I just opened the email and I bought two of them and it's the Begonia Brever Breverimosa Exotica. And if that doesn't ring any bells, it is that one. So it has like really, really beautiful like neon pink and dark dark green coloring which i am so excited for and again it is like a cane begonia type of leaf and the leaves actually look like they would be more like of a wide cane begonia like more like this so a little bit less like the miss mummy and the maculata and i'm just super excited about it i don't know if it's a difficult begonia to care for i totally forgot to say this but i also have a wish list begonia and that is the begonia emmy foxes hopefully i said that correctly but i'm pretty sure my local nursery sells these and i'm definitely going to pick one up next time i go because they are so cute i think a lot of people keep them in a terrarium or something like that but i'm going to see how it goes in my greenhouse cabinet because I might be clearing up some space in there soon. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. But I would say in general, begonia do need humidity. Like there's a lot of begonias that pretty much can only be grown in terrariums. And so I would say the, the cane begonias are a lot easier to care for because they don't necessarily need to be in a terrarium situation but they do require humidity. I mean, any plant requires humidity, but I think that these ones will show the effects of low humidity depending on which one you have. So for example, this one, I noticed that a lot of the leaf bottoms are like crispy. You can see that like dark color right there. You can, you can also hear it. <laughs> and that is pretty much a result of one, possibly my water situation, like the water just sort of um, burns the leaves and or two, the plant is not getting enough humidity. And it honestly could be a combination of the two, but I'd say a majority of them do have some sort of like brown on the tip of the leaves. So it's just something to consider when you do buy them. Um, I have a humidifier that I have running in here most of the time. It's not running currently because this room is like under construction. Even with the humidifier, it doesn't really raise the humidity all that much. So just something to think about leaves that are usually very, very thin will require either more frequent waterings or higher humidity, sometimes both. And then as far as the soil, I just use De La Tank soil completely unamended and they all seem pretty happy soil wise, so that's good. And then of course I have three of them in terracotta, one of them in plastic. And I'd say the terracotta ones are honestly doing better than the one in plastic, but I don't think that the type of pot really matters all that much. And I am not a huge begonia collector. I don't claim to know everything about begonias. I just have a couple that I really like and are doing pretty well for me. So I thought that I would show you my collection and you know, hear about what begonias you have. So if you have any begonias in your collection or if you are a big, big fan of begonias, uh, leave a comment down below. I'm interested to hear about your begonia collection and how you started collecting them and yeah, just hear more about that. All right, you guys, that is going to be all for my begonia collection video. I hope that you enjoyed hearing a little bit more about the begonias in my collection. We're gonna have a big send off from little Leo. <laughs> tell them bye. Oh, tell them to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell because you always wanna be notified when I upload. <laughs> All right, you guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye. Puppy kisses from Koopy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Hmm. I love kissing him before he has a chance to kiss me. Does anybody else do that with their dogs? Probably, right?